this activity has three parts. This is video four because we need to go back to the first layer that we made and finish it off. Start by putting the last layer that you made down on the table in front of you. Then take the first layer that you made and set it down so that it's on top of the first one. Now make sure that your dot and your line match up. This might take a few seconds, but be patient. It's important that these features line up if you want the results of this next step to be accurate. Remember that it's more important for the features to line up, the lines and the dots, than it is for the edges of the paper to line up. Now that my features are lined up, I'm going to revisit this crease right here. But instead of creasing it up like this, being very careful to keep these two pieces of paper lined up, I'm going to fold it back. I'm folding that, that same crease that I made in step one, but I'm folding it under. Having done that, I can see where that line, the very first line I ever drew on one of these pieces, goes through or crosses the shape that I made on the layer underneath it. Where that happens, I'm going to draw a dot. of this top layer of patty paper. With those two dots in place, I can safely take away the bottom layer and set it aside for now. And then I can also unfold this layer. I've labeled all my other dots so far on one layer or another. Remember, this one I labeled F, this one was P and this one X. This is V. This is F, but it's not labeled on this layer. That's okay. I've drawn two more dots, and so I'm going to label those as well. The left one, I'm going to label L for left, and the right one, R for right. With a straight edge, I'm going to draw a line segment from L to R, not beyond it, just from L to R. And you'll notice as you do that, that that line segment goes through this middle point here. Making sure, let me try this one from the bottom. Making sure that they, they line up. It's possible, it, as in my case, that my line may not be absolutely perfectly through this middle point. To finalize my project, I need to highlight some of the features and downplay others. I'm going to start with this first layer that I made that I've just added to. I'm going to darken the points V, L, and R and their labels. And to do that, I'm going to use a fine Sharpie pen. Notice that I've done everything in pencil so far, in case I made a mistake. But now I'm switching to a Sharpie. I'm not going to highlight everything. I'm not going to darken everything. I'm only going to darken the point L and its label, the point R and its label, and the point V and its label. On that layer, I'm also going to darken the line segment between the points L and R. I really want to be able to see those features on this layer. On the second layer, I'm going to darken just about everything, actually, it turns out. I'm going to darken my original line. Again, here, I need to be very careful because I'm going over a line that's already there with a new marker. So I should use a straight edge. And I should take my time making sure that things line up before I draw with a permanent marker. I'm also going to darken the points F, P, and X, 
and their labels. And I'm going to darken the line segments. So it turns out that on this layer, we're darkening just about everything. I'm not going to draw over the crease, but everything else. On this layer, I'm going to darken the shape that I drew that I've already gone over with a pencil. And you can see I've already made a little mistake there. That's okay. But do be careful and take your time. If you make a big mistake, chances are you're going to want to redo the whole layer. And that's a little bit time consuming. Now that's not perfect, but it's close enough. I haven't darkened anything except the shape itself on this layer. Now I'm going back to the layer that has V, L, and R on it. And I'm actually gonna tape those down. I've got some tape here. I'm going to tape this to the page and it's like I've got some marks underneath it there that are showing through. I'll be giving you some paper to use for this. So start with a clean sheet of paper underneath. Tape it down, top and bottom. Now I'm going to add the FPX layer. But before I tape it down, I'm going to cut a small strip of paper off the top, the top edge. It doesn't have to be very much, and it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I'll explain why we're doing this in just a minute. Cut that edge off. Then line up your point F and the line across the bottom. Make sure those are very carefully lined up. And then tape this layer down, but only on the bottom. Only on the bottom edge. Make sure everything's lined up. Tape down the bottom edge. Okay, I'm not going to tape it up here. I want to be able to lift it. Finally, take your third layer, your actual shape, and cut a small strip from the bottom. It's okay if you actually cut the line off here if you want to. I'm going to leave mine on because I know it's a, a good guide for lining things up with the, the layers underneath it. Cut a strip of paper off the bottom. This time we're going to tape this one down only on the top edge. So once again, I'm going to line my middle point up, line my line up with the layers underneath, and then I'm going to tape it down at the top. Now I can see not only the shape that I've drawn, but the features underneath. Why did I cut the strips off the top and the bottom? Well, notice that this top layer now lifts, the bottom layer underneath lifts, and I can reverse the order. And because I've cut a little off the bottom, it still fits. This page, in this order, is how you want to present this shape in your portfolio. At the top of the page, write the parabola. And underneath that write your name. Once you've done that, set this aside. You'll be adding it to your portfolio, your Conics portfolio, 
at the end of the quarter.